Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we have 10 games for you to play with a partner or someone who's perhaps not so much into games as you are. To help me with this, I have my wife, Louise. You all right? Yes. Lovely, and we're gonna look at some of the games we play together. Now these are not all necessarily two player games. Some are, some are co-op games, some are competitive. Some are one player games that we will just discuss as we went along. When you look on the horizon, what you see is what you get. Right, the first game then is Overcooked or Overcooked 2, Eva, both are on the Switch. Now this is probably the multiplayer series that we've played the most between us. Why do you like Overcooked? So this is a game that we have put many hours into. I'm not quite sure how we got into it or where it all started, but I think it was because I used to play a game similar on the DS, is that right? Diner Dash on the DS. Yeah, so we played the first one through, I think we got three stars on every level on that first one, didn't we? Yeah, we really did challenge ourselves on that one. I think we spent quite a lot of time replaying levels just to get those three stars, and I'm not quite sure why now. I think we did quite well with this one, because this is definitely a game that you could get the ump with your partner over, isn't it? Right, from a cooperative one then to a competitive one, the next one is Super Bomberman R. Now, not this particular version, but we played a lot of Bomberman when we first met because I had it on the DS and you used to be able to do the, the download where you could play a two-player game with only having one copy of the game. I don't think you'd ever played Bomberman before that, had you? No, and I'm still actually waiting um, to gain my victory over you. To be fair, you weren't too bad at that first game, and we played a fair bit of it on the Switch when it first came out. I think this was one of the first games we got, wasn't it? We had uh, Zelda and this were the first two we got. Yeah, I think that one held quite a lot of memories for us when we were obviously first getting together and we used to play quite a lot of it then. So I think it was like the first one that we invested in when you got your new console. Right, next one then. This is a bit of a generalisation, but this is the Lego games. Now, you've played a lot of Lego games, more than me. You play a lot of them on the Wii U still to this day, don't you? I think you get a little bit frustrated with me, though, when we're playing them together, because I just want to run around and break things up and collect all the bricks, and you just kind of want to get going to the next mission. Yeah, I think that's where we differ on these ones. I, I don't really care about collecting stuff and 100% and I just want to finish the game, but you wander about for ages, get all the stuff. <laughs> I don't feel like I've completed it unless I see that 100% bar at the end of the game. We've played Lego City Undercover on the Switch together and I think we played a bit of... The Harry Potter. Yep, and the movie, Lego Movie 2 we played for review as well, didn't we? So my favourite is the Jurassic Park on the Wii U. I'm very much looking forward to getting that on the Switch. Next one then, this was one of my picks, and it was one we played more together on the PlayStation 4, but we do have it on the Switch as well, and that's This War of Mine. Now the reason I liked playing this one with you was because it's quite a stressful game, isn't it? You got There's a lot of decisions you've got to make, life or death decisions, and I actually quite liked sharing the burden when it went wrong. It was quite an emotional game. The number of times we actually had to pause it just so that we could talk about the next decision to make so we wanted to make sure it was the right one. And actually I remember you know, feeling gutted when we lost one of the characters or he didn't quite make it back and we just felt really responsible for that. And I think at one point we had to have a little break from playing it. Next one then is a, a single player game, but it's one that we play together, and it's a game called Letter Quest Remastered. It's a bit like Scrabble, isn't it? It is, um, and, and trying to find the, the words to defeat the next sort of enemies is quite tricky actually. It seems really simple to think about, you've got tiles with letters in, you're just trying to find the best words you can, but actually it's harder than it would first appear, I think. Yeah, it gets a bit stressful when you're looking for the words and it's a blatantly one staring right at you and you can't see it. But as you say, it's not just about finding the words, but you have to make enough points up to then defeat the enemies as well. The 
The next one then, and I think this is probably your favourite of the lot, and this is Unravel 2. Now we took this away on holiday with us recently, didn't we? So this game really does suit me, not being the biggest of gamers. So I can work with you and, and solve puzzles with you, but then actually when it gets to the tricky bit and the really fiddly bit, I can kind of stick to you and then let you do all the hard work and then we can unravel. Yeah, so it has a mechanic where you can weave into one another, so one player can do a certain part of the level if the other player is struggling, which is a nice little touch. There was a part in, in one of the levels where it's almost like a boss battle, and we were being chased by a giant chicken. Do you remember that one? Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> I think we, we lost, and we had to restart that so many times just because we were laughing so much. Yeah, it was one of those bits where any other game, it probably would have started getting frustrating when one person's dying or you're having to do it over and over again. But just because of the situation, you're both made out of wool and you're being chased by a chicken, it was just so funny. Next one's a board game, and there's a few of these on the Switch, but the one that we're going to mention is Pandemic, which I reviewed on the channel a couple of months back. Why did you like Pandemic then? Love this game. I think we we really took some time like examining the characters and talking about what they could do. And then I think it was just a kind of trial and error for us, working out how we could actually beat the virus as such. Yeah, so this is actually a co-op board game, which is quite unusual, isn't it? Yeah, we've played a couple of board games on the Switch, such as Monopoly and things, but this one, it was just the way it was done, it was very clever. Um, and the music as well really does sort of set your heart racing when you think you're about to destroy the world and all sorts. Okay, the next one is Snipper Clips, which I think came out quite early on in the Switch's life, although I didn't buy it until the physical release came out. So I'm sure most people have played this by now, but the basic idea is that you have to cut each other into pieces to be able to then solve particular problems. That sounds really weird. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a weird game, but it's good though, it's a good laugh. I think we spent the majority of the first kind of playthroughs just taking chunks out of each other when the other one wasn't looking. Yeah, our daughter likes playing this one as well. I play this with her quite a bit, but that's exactly all she does now. She just cuts me up. She doesn't. We don't actually do any of the missions. She just chops my little character into pieces all the time. So. Right, the penultimate game then is Kirby Star Allies, and this was the other one that we took on holiday with us. We haven't played a huge amount of this particular Kirby game, but we've played quite a few Kirby games together over the years. There were a couple on the Wii, one was Epic Yarn, which was a really good game. This one's decent, you can have up to four players on this one, and you can have AI characters join you if it's just the two of you. Final game then, and it's a game called White Knight. Now, again, this is a single player experience, but we played it together. This may be a game that some people haven't heard of, and it plays quite similarly to some of the older Resident Evil games with a third person perspective and fixed camera angles. But the other thing about this one was that you had a limited number of matches in order to keep the room lit, and if it went dark, you were attacked by a monster. It was something like that, wasn't it? We were being hunted, I think. This one was like playing a bit of a movie, really. I've still got, and I still remember to this day, like this one bit that we really got stuck on. I think we had about three matches left, and we had to get back into the lit room. And it was just the the panic and the fear that we needed to do it and we had to keep trying again and, and retracing our steps and it really was an experience that one. So those are our 10 picks. I know they're maybe not as conventional as some, there's no Mario Party, Mario Kart, etc. But that's the beauty of these lists because if you have any different games that you play with your partner or someone that's not as much of a gamer, then stick them down below, make some recommendations for other games that we can try out. 
Just want to say thank you to Louise for helping me out with this video. Apologies for my voice, I've had a bit of a cold all week. Thank you to everyone that's just helped us reach 50,000 subscribers, it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you as always to our Patreons for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time. Happy gaming!